today we're going to be covering the new FLIR VS290 visual and infrared dual boroscope video scope. Uh, on the left hand side is our display unit and our probe on the right hand side. The display unit has a battery in the bottom, uh, two buttons to depress to remove it. On the face of the battery or the uh, display is a, a female micro USB C connection and a male micro USB on the, dis on the probe itself. It only goes on one way, there's a white dash to line up with the camera. Quarter turn clockwise, quarter turn counterclockwise to remove and pull apart. Uh, on the top of the camera is a 16 gig SD card included with the kit. And aside from the non touchscreen interface on the camera is a trigger mechanism here for recording video and images on board. This is our probe mechanism. Uh, the probe that we have here today is a two meter, uh, two meter semi-rigid probe. Uh, from the display unit to the camera, the first meter is very flexible as you can see. The last meter is more rigid to provide a little bit of stability for the operator of the, the imager itself. And that first meter allows for some flexibility from the camera or the display side. On this side we have the actual camera, so we have the visual, infrared, and the lamp. And on the other side we have nothing. On the display unit, on off button in the bottom right, escape key or our back button here, down, up, left and right, toggle, center select button for bringing up the menus uh, and to toggle. Our bottom left corner is our lamp. You'll see an indicator on the display uh, and then our playback button to review images and video stored on the display. On the camera, we have a center fixed spot in the top left corner is a measurement for that spot. On the right hand side, we have a level and span, which is auto adjusting. As I put my hand in the field of view here, you're gonna see that level and span jump up based on what's in the field of the view and jump back down when I remove it. I get into my menus on the left hand side, we have our screen rotation. That allows us to rotate the screen 90 degrees instead of having to turn the camera itself. Next menu over is our image modes. We have three image modes, thermal MSX, a thermal and a visual camera, or a digital camera, two megapixels. The thermal MSX is an overlay mode. So when I get into that mode, it overlays the visual with the infrared. So when I bring the battery into the field of view, you're gonna see some visual data on it, the written data. And then when I switch over to the thermal mode, you're gonna see that that goes away. So it's only showing the thermal data in thermal mode. MSX shows both the visual and the thermal data. Uh, can be very, very helpful when you're in a confined space and you don't have a lot of thermal detail. It just adds some more detail on the screen. So as I get into the menus again and toggle over to the right, I have my color palettes on board, which are iron, rainbow, uh, and our grayscale or white hot, and then our two alarms. We have an above alarm and a below alarm. These are uh, isotherms, basically allow us to pinpoint uh, very easily temperatures above or below a certain threshold. Next menu over is our measurement tools, our spot measurement and our hot spot box. Extremely helpful here. When that's activated, it will show us the hottest spot in the square. So you can see the cursor jumps to my hand. Uh, very, very good time saver. If I go over to the cold spot, it does the exact same thing for the coldest spot in the box and displays that in the top left corner. Our next menu over is just a no measurement screen. Clears the screen for the operator to see the full field of view. Our next menu over is our thermal uh, thermal scale, our temperature scale. So I mentioned we can leave it in auto scale, which is auto adjusting based on what's in the field of view. What we can do is lock that field of view. So right now my hand is above the top end of the scale, which is why it's showing up white hot. The tighter our scale, the more contrast we'll see on the screen. Um, so we're gonna switch that back over to auto scale. In our settings menu, we have a recording mode. These do take both uh, video and single shots. Uh, our next one down is measurement parameters. These are tools for thermal measurement, uh, accuracy and repeatability for true measurements. Uh, our save options, uh, and then we have some device settings in here for measuring, uh, measurements based on your region, uh, whether you wanna use meters or feet, uh, Fahrenheit or Celsius, date and time, all of those things. You have an auto power off to extend battery life. There's Wi-Fi on here so you could share images and video via Wi-Fi. Um, the camera would need to be connected to a network for that to, to work or, or connected to a device, excuse me. Uh, screen brightness is adjustable. Flashlight settings are also adjustable based on the intensity. Uh, you have some system information for serial numbers, firmware, all of those things, and then some reset options on the camera.